How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, I said that I was going to put up a video about Amber Geiger over on Lisa's channel. Uh, I got to put my dig in too. In the arrogance of the enemy, we should not be surprised about their nature. And um, I'm going to take us on a journey. I have some stuff that I'm going to read. But this is where I want to start at first. Okay, when I was doing my research about um, what her lawyers attempted to do, the media is is very purposeful and very misleading damn near everything i pulled up you would see that um you know she didn't win a, a second time in court and she got a, a a slap on the wrist they kept showing the footage of this fucking fiasco botham jeans little retarded ass brother pulling the stunt that he pulled so you'll see one thing on a title but then they're going to show that actual footage which throws people off so the media is letting you because they work in unison they letting us know where they truly stand and then that's more of a dig because again the enemy understands that they are in a war and they know how psychologically damaging that can be to us so again this is a prime example of when the enemy get an opportunity please pay attention because i've Poor been saying cop, Amber oops, oh, is oh, in oh, oh, 10 year sentence hold attached up. to her name for killing both of them in his own oh lord okay let me put that on all the way mute so let me go back here so what we need to do when we get an opportunity in this unquote war, we need to be very unforgiving whatever we execute, you know, because we have did everything under the sun to be peaceful with this beast and that don't work. But they fully understand when you how did my father put it? The very thing that the enemy is projecting on you, you project it on them because the things that they are projecting is their true fears. Think about that. So um, that irritated the hell out of me um, that they kept showing that shit. Oh, that's her troll ass mama. Well, I'll get back to her little ugly looking ass later. And also they show this damn judge too do you think do you, anybody think this judge ever hugged a black person in court and gave him a bible and what she did was a violation the, and um the bailiffs let everything go down and all that see how they lax with them and stuff i mean it really gets on my damn nerves so anyhow we are going to go on this journey first thing i want to show i like to do recaps you've uh you told us about how you Okay. 
Becky Tears. First of all, uh, when you were walking out of that hall, I want you to show the jury how you treated this equipment, okay? Look like her ass about to cry. Fake ass judge. She feels sorry for her. Yeah, so you can go back in your chambers and go cry too. Boy, boy, boy. Some of our folks, I, I, I just don't understand and not going to try to understand. But I just had to put that dig in. So after everything is said and done, the the that whole fiasco that happened in court, boy, I, I'll never forget that day. That was like one of those moments that just froze. And I was like, Lord have mercy, you know, with um, Botham's little retarded brother, you know, he springs that on the family. And I seen his sister and his mother, they were instantly pissed. And then his damn father told me he want to be friends with the person that murdered their royal son. They This little thing here, they give him a an award and he gets up there and get this crazy speech talking about um, it was all due to her training. She shouldn't be in jail at all. At all. I'm like, damn. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm going to start out with this video that popped up on me. And I'm going to um, play this one first. Former Dallas cop Amber Geiger is in prison. A 10-year sentence is attached to her name for killing Botham John in his own apartment. But right now, outside the walls she's confined to, her attorneys are trying to shorten her stay or get her murder conviction overturned. My client, according to the facts, had a reasonable apprehension of danger when she walked into what she thought was her apartment. She would have been entitled to use deadly force and self-defense. In a state appellate court, one of Geiger's attorneys argued this. The 32-year-old's belief that an intruder was in her apartment when she accidentally entered John's qualifies her for a lesser charge. Criminally negligent homicide, which comes with less prison time. But one of the justices put Geiger's attorney in check, arguing that Geiger admitted on the stand she intended to kill John and that it doesn't disqualify the murder charge. When she entered what she thought was her own apartment, she did not have evil intent when she entered her own apartment. You know, merely, you know, again. Just because of her alleged mistaken belief about where she was doesn't negate her intent to kill. It could be weeks, maybe months before a decision is made. The Jean family watched the proceeding via live stream, writing this Tuesday. We vehemently oppose Amber Geiger's appeal in her attempt to get a reduced sentence. When Amber Geiger was sentenced, our family finally found a measure of justice and peace. Her actions were clearly criminal. She saw a black man and shot without reason and without justification, murdering him in his own home. The jury delivered a thoughtful and just verdict that should not be overturned. In Dallas. I'm Matt Howardson. All right. Tony Royal Geiger, family. Uh, didn't appear in the Zoom hearing today. And just so you know, it could be months before we hear a decision. Well, it wasn't that long because they put that video up in April. Did that, I mean, that that um, that um report in April. So let me read something here before I get into um, the next two videos. So. Appeals court rejects Amber Geiger's claim that her mur murder of Botham Jean 
in his home was self-defense, direct evidence of her intent to kill. I'm only going to read the juicy parts of this. A Texas appeal court on Thursday upheld a murder conviction against Amber Geiger, the former Dallas police officer who killed Bothan Jean in his home in 2018. See, Geiger was convicted in 2019, a second degree murder in the shooting of an unarmed man and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. The case drew national attention and was one shooting in a rash of police shootings involving white police officers and black men. The fifth Texas, yeah, the fifth Texas Court of Appeals ruled Thursday that Dallas uh, County had sufficient evidence to convict Geiger, who turns 33 on, mo on Monday. Geiger's defense attorney, Michael, let me see, Malo, that's the best I can pronounce it, argued that the murder convention should be thrown out because she was acting in self-defense when she shot Gene thinking he was in her apartment and that he was an intruder. Um, I'm just going to say Michael because I can't pronounce that last name. Michael said the lower court judge um, made was in her own apartment when she shot Gene um, which would have made the shooting reasonable. Michael asked the courts to resentence Geiger on the conviction of criminality negligence, homicide, a lesser charge that carries a maximum sentence of two years in prison if the judge, judge judges decide um, not to fully acquit her. Jean, a 26-year-old um, accountant, was in his apartment, Okay, we already know what went down. I want to get to this. This is the best part to me. The panel did not question the facts of the case and agreed with prosecutors that the error was not reasonable and that Geiger had intended to kill Jean, finding that her belief that deadly force was necessary and was also reasonable that she was mistaken as to Gene's status as a, a resident in his own apartment or a burglar in hers does not change her mental state uh, from intentionally or knowingly to um, criminally negligence. The judge wrote in a 23-page opinion, we declined to rely on um, Geiger's misperception of the circumstance leading to her mistakes, beliefs as a basis to reform the um, juror's verdict in light of the direct evidence of her intent to kill. An attorney for Jean's family said they were relieved to hear the court's decision. Geiger um, could have been um, sentenced to as many as 99 years in prison and prosecutors had asked that she would be sentenced to 28 years, which, um, which is the age of Jean uh, would have um, turned during the trial. Geiger's defense attorney could go before the um, Texas Courts of Criminal Appeals and ask them to review the decision. She will be eligible for parole 2024 under her current sentence. All right. So they got the rejection, but don't be surprised by the enemy's nature. So I have um, two videos. First, we're going to listen to uh, Botham's mother. Botham Jean's mother says she is furious tonight over Amber Geiger's appeal. The former Dallas police officer wants a court to overturn her murder conviction and 10-year prison sentence for killing Jean in his own apartment. Jean's mother told Scott Gordon that if anything changes, Geiger should get a longer sentence. 
I feel furious about it, I'll tell you. Botham John's mother, Allison John, speaking from her home in St. Lucia, reacting to Amber Geiger's appeal. It really made me question the nerve of Amber Geiger and her attorneys to even think of wanting to file an appeal. In a long legal brief, Geiger's attorneys argue it was a mistake to convict Geiger of murder, claiming the charge should have been criminally negligent homicide. When they bring the, these lame issues, it really shows that they have, you know, they, 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 they've gotten, they, they're low. They have stooped very low for Amber Geiger. Geiger was sentenced to 10 years after an extraordinary trial full of raw emotion. The former cop had just arrived home, still in uniform, after a long day at work. She says she shot John, believing he was an intruder in her apartment, not realizing she had mistakenly walked into his. And can you kill someone in the comfort of their home and just say, I'm sorry, just as a, 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 an apology, and you just get away with it? I mean, where in the world does that happen? The Jean family's attorney says he doesn't think the appeal will be successful. I don't think there's anything new uh, within the brief. Uh, I think the jury had the, all the evidence uh, that was before them. And I, I think the, the right decision was made. Today is my 31st wedding anniversary. Angry over the appeal, Botham Jean's mother says she and her husband can't celebrate their wedding anniversary, even as others call to congratulate them. In the one call that I cannot get, it's from my son, Mofa. That's, I'm in pain. It's hurting. And the family may have to relive their pain again in a lawsuit against Geiger and the city, still in its early stages. Scott Gordon, NBC5. Oh. Geiger's attorneys handling the appeal did not respond to our request for comment. No, they ain't. Uh-uh. So we shouldn't be surprised by that. But um, the reason why I had played that video... Um, I wanted the royal family to hear Botham's mother. Now, I have seen an interview where they asked um, his mother, was, he, was she um, going to forgive Amber? And she said, basically, I'm not there. And then I read, I think it was on Twitter, Botham's sister was on there and she was pissed. And she said, I ain't never forgave him and I don't plan on forgave her I, and I don't plan on um, forgiving her. The father, like I said, did his son did his dumb shit. The father did his dumb shit. But I could read um, on the females in that family. They were livid, you know, with that livid. You know, you don't have your family member um, blindsiding you like that. So let's... Uh, listen to this next video this is a um, video is a, a little over seven almost eight minutes former dallas police officer amber geiger was sentenced to 10 years in prison for murdering her neighbor botham jean she found compassion from an unlikely source jean's brother brant jean gave geiger a hug and said he knows botham would have wanted her to devote her life to christ our guest, Erin Haynes, wrote about that moment for the Associated Press. She says many black Americans resent the coverage of that moment because it runs the risk of papering over a legacy of racial violence. Erin Haynes joins us now from Philadelphia. She's a national writer on race and ethnicity for the AP. Erin, uh, so great to have you. Thanks, Vlad. Nice to be with you today. So explain to our viewers uh, what you mean when you wrote in your piece that this was a, quote, rush to forget racial violence. Sure. So while uh, Brand John's uh, gesture to, to forgive Amber Geiger was certainly something that was a personal choice for him, uh, there was a concern among many Black Americans who felt that this was a familiar scene where, uh, you know, a, a Black family member who has lost a loved one forgives, and that turns into kind of a broader conversation about public forgiveness that is really not so much focused on healing, but really just about moving on and not really acknowledging the larger uh, problem of um, police violence in communities of color that has been, uh, you know, making our national headlines for the past several years. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I saw posted on social media, and there are other pieces written about this, is 
Uh, whilst, as you point out, it was a personal decision uh, for him to reach out to Amber Geiger, uh, the question was asked, how often do you see, for example, uh, families of white victims uh, reaching out, embracing uh, the black perpetrator of, of a horrific crime, or even someone who's been wrongly accused, as it happens in some cases. Right, and, and I think that that really was also a, a large part of the conversation that I was seeing too and hearing from folks that I spoke with. You just don't really see the same expectation or call for kind of that grace and compassion that you see a lot of times from, from these black family members. You, you don't see that same call um, to, to white Americans who, who have experienced uh, you know, uh, violence or who have lost a loved one. And, and really also just the issue that, that black anger or rage is not something that is seen as justified or, or really acknowledged. Uh, there are calls for calm from, you know, that are issued to the black community in, in these kind of tense times. I know certainly awaiting the Geiger verdict, uh, there was a call in Dallas, you know, for people to remain calm and not uh, be violent, even though, you know, the community was, was uh, really reacting to, to what they felt was violence that had been done to them. Right. And, you know, as we were discussing that, I mean, it's, it's good to point out that we may not have ever seen something like that on camera. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen that somebody has embraced somebody who's African-American who's perpetrated a crime. But I think the notes that I was getting on social media more had to do with the coverage. The coverage has been sort of outsized in this one particular moment. And on the flip side, why do you think there were so many people that were quick to call this, as you put it, an act of amazing grace and redemption? Well, I think for a lot of people, it was reminiscent of the um, what happened in the wake of the Charleston 9 shooting, where you had a lot of family members there immediately expressing uh, forgiveness for, for Dylan Roof, uh, the shooter in, in that case. Uh, and I actually spoke to uh, a woman who was the daughter of one of the victims of the Charleston 9, uh, Reverend Shannon Risher. And what she had to say was that, you know, her sister, uh, was, was, I think, the first person that forgave Dylan Roof, but but she actually took about two years to come to that decision on her own and, and really just kind of reiterated the um, the notion that, that forgiveness is a personal choice uh, for a lot of these folks. It is, uh, as it was in Brent John's case, I believe, um, a, a matter of faith uh, that, that motivated uh, that gesture, but, but um, certainly... Um, taking that individual choice and, and broadening it out to make it about, um, you know, more of what the, the, the larger black community should do or, 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 you know, in these situations is, is something that people took issue with. Mm. And you also write in your article about how this isn't the first time we've seen this kind of expression uh, of forgiveness. You pointed out uh, Dylan Roof. Tell us a little bit more about that. Explain to the audience what you mean about uh, the idea, the notion behind something perpetrated against one group of people and generally the victim having to be the one to open up or to find forgiveness um, in their hearts to the perpetrators. Yeah, um, I think um, especially in the Black Lives Matter era, you have seen, um, you know, even as uh, you have grieving parents or other family members, uh, grieving the loss of their loved one, uh, them having to, you know, be at the press conference, uh, urge calm, uh, even if they're not expressing forgiveness, just trying to tamp down any uh, feelings of black anger. Uh, that's something that has been kind of a recurring theme. Uh, but I mean, just, just um, historically, uh, when uh, white uh, America has, has done uh, an act of violence against a black person, you see examples where, um, you know, the, the response is, well, you know, are you angry with me? Or uh, are you, you know, what is, what is going to be the reaction from the black community as a result of this violence that was done to them? Does it serve as absolvement for some in, in some instances for people to feel as if they've been forgiven? Um, for something that they may have perpetrated? Uh, well, you know, I'm not sure about that, Vlad, but I will say that um, the, uh, the conversation around absolution, uh, what a lot of the people that I spoke to for this story were saying was that, you know, what that really does is it takes the focus off of the actual victim. And, and like I said, the conversation that we're having about uh, the killing of unarmed black people by police and really puts it back on um, the uh, perpetrator. I mean, you know, Amber Geiger uh, was convicted 
a murder. And, you know, it, it did not feel necessarily uh, like that uh, when, you know, as this, as this gesture was unfolding, um, first by the brother, but then also uh, by the judge in the case who embraced her as well and, and gave her a Bible. Mm. Um, and you also pointed this out, uh, that in fact, uh, Brant Jones specifically cited his Christian faith during his statement. How does that play into this, the idea of forgiveness, uh, redemption, absolvement? Well, certainly, you know, in Christianity, forgiveness is a central tenet of, of the faith, but, but especially for the black church historically, um, you know, race and faith um, have a unique relationship, uh, you know, even going back to slavery. And uh, so the notion uh, of forgiveness does um, play out a little differently in the black church. Uh, certainly uh, some of the folks that I interviewed, uh, you know, cited that relationship, that historic relation, historical relationship, and kind of how uh, we see that playing out uh, in instances like these. Aaron Haynes, really interesting article, and it's a conversation that a lot of people. All right, my royal family, what I got to say about this is, um, on the forgiveness level, it's um, a form of insanity. No other group, race of people, they get up in their face and say, do you forgive a person for murdering your loved ones? I'm gonna go back to the nature. See, they, what, they're, what the enemy is telling us to dismiss our nature. Because forgiving don't take away the pain. So it's sadistic to me on their end. They get uh, a, uh, a great deal of satisfaction. It's a form of entertainment to the enemy. It really is. It truly is and stuff. And let me get over here. I think it's this. Nope. This right here. This is the demon that birthed this murder, murderer. So we know if she makes it to her mama's age and her mother ain't that old, this is what Amber Geiger gonna look like real quick. But remember, this bitch birthed um, a murderer. What was the dynamics in that household? What was going on in that household for her to do what she did? Who was the first teacher? This little dried up ass beast at the end of the day. And the level of arrogance, um, that's how they get down. So the fan, you know, you know, the Botham's brother makes this gesture. The ju judge makes this gesture. And um, could you imagine um how them folks was looking at them in, in, in that courtroom. They said, these niggas is insane. They literally insane. You know, you just want to chalk it up. Oops, it was an accident and all that stuff. That is a human life. They don't value us. They don't value us at all whatsoever. We need to learn how to be selfish and value each other. We need to learn how to forgive each other. Because you know when we get angry with each other, we put a line in the sand and our jaws will be tight for years and stuff. But that, that's the level of insanity even on our, on our end where we don't want to forgive each other, but then somebody can do something as horrendous as mur murdering and you forgive them? Do we have the power to forgive. So the last thing I wanted to say, um, that um, what I'm disappointed with, now this is what I do support. I support her getting out of jail right now. And um, um, they gonna give her, put her on a tour, get a book deal, possibly a movie deal, and she'll just be speaking throughout the United States to make her coins and stuff like that. And Botham's family need to sue her for some high millions um, of dollars. Put that hoe on the track. Yeah, let her get out. Let her be a slave to them. 
And that's why I don't understand why they are not suing her directly. They will gonna sure that money. And you know, they love throwing money at at um at them in in the high millions and stuff. Yeah. That now that's some real justice. Cause she would resent the fact that um she gotta kick out money. And when I say I'm not saying it would happen. It would be like three or four hundred million dollars. It wouldn't be that. They probably would re reduce it down to something. But yeah, I'm I'm in favor for that. I would hold that bitch out. She would be working that track. Yeah, get your book deal. Get your movie deal. Go on your little sob tour and all of that. And before you get your coins, that amount of money whatever whatever the percentage is will go to the family and see they have civil attorneys and i was like they they can sue in many ways now i do know that they're trying to overturn this thing um with the with the city uh, um the state of texas um po they probably getting compensated and stuff but um I, I i i strongly doubt it will happen we shall see in due time but um, I wanted to take the time to do a video on this and stuff. And it is what it is. So do your part. Render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.